Perfect. Great. A very, very good evening to everyone, to all the viewers. And it's been a very, very special Friday to us because we have another guest today, Dr. Zishan Ali from Washington, D.C., joining us today. He has been associated with this lifestyle disease reversal for more than eight years now. And uh, he would be throwing some light on lifestyle disease and the reversal of lifestyle disease. So thank you so much, Dr. Zishan. It was lovely. You know, uh, it is lovely, indeed lovely to have you on our show today. The pleasure is all mine, Karan. Thank you for inviting me. It's such a great pleasure to be here. You know, so before we kickstart, uh, a little introduction about Dr. Zishan. Dr. Zishan uh, is the Kickstart India Program Specialist at the Physician Committee for Responsible Medicine based in Washington, D.C. He is involved with, uh, also with writing scientific reviews, articles, and a lot of publication based on plant-based nutrition. And uh, he will be here today uh, empowering all of us with right information uh, in terms of reversing lifestyle diseases. So very quickly, let me start uh, with the subject today, Zishan. And uh, lifestyle disease in India, you have studied this very closely. You yourself, you know, Indian based in US and doing ex excellent work with enormous amount of doctors under PCRM community. So what, you know, what do you feel has been uh, three, four primary reasons behind the rise of lifestyle diseases in uh, a country like India? Very good question, Karan. I think, yeah, we are seeing lifestyle diseases becoming a common uh, thing, not only in India, but around the world. Why is that? It's a very good question. I think definitely number one reason is increased consumption of Western foods high in animal fats. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing this, that our consumption of animal products has increased by more than 130% over the last 15 to 20 years. Our the consumption, one yes, increase in last exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And our consumption of C, uh, core cereals. Mm -hmm. Remember the days we used to eat jowar and bajra and all those thing, rotis? And now gone are the, are the days. So the consumption of core cereals has significantly reduced. Significant. So that means we are e eating a diet which is high in animal fats, eating a diet which is very heavy in oil. And all these products are causing these lifestyle problems because these are lifestyle. That means life, why it is called lifestyle? It has a reason. It, it is based on the way we are living now. So this is the primary reason. Again, the second thing is ease of availability of food. That the way the, the, the industry is working that within, it is within no minute, within no time, you can have cheese, you can have chicken, you can have eggs in every nick and corner, you can find these items. So yeah. the, the ease of availability is a very big problem. Then the economy shifting from countryside to urban life. So more and more people, people are becoming uh, dependent on these uh, products available by the marketing industry and not spending too much time on getting the produce or spending time in the kitchen. So all these factors are leading to uh, this lifestyle problems. And then again, a very big problem is these marketing of these convenience foods. You see the ad industry, in yeah. television and newspapers and billboards, big ads of yogurts and dairy and eggs and, and KFC and McDonald's. So the kids are getting attracted and definitely there is such a huge element of this involvement in our life that we, we get influenced, right? The, the more we see this, the more we get influenced, the more we want to try. And then sedentary lifestyle, I, would, I cannot emphasize enough that yeah we are having a very sedentary lifestyle along with all the wrong foods in our system, in our diet, we are also not uh, becoming physically active. Yeah. And another factor is stress. Stress is a very big factor. We are all dealing with stress, whether it's work related, family related. And because of that, in top of that, not getting enough sleep. So the combination of all these yes. things is leading to lifestyle diseases. I think I think that is very well uh, said because you mostly covered all the points 
which has led to the rise of lifestyle diseases, including emotional health, like stress and sleep, which is very, very important. In fact, I was talking to a very renowned diabetologist based in Chennai a couple of uh -huh. days back, and he was telling me that in 1990s, you know, in 1990s, the diabetic uh, percentage of population in Chennai was minuscule compared to now, which is around 12, 30 yeah. percent, you know, just 20, right. 30 years, right? Right. So and I think all of these factors that you mentioned do contribute to, you know, the epidemic of lifestyle diseases that we are into, you know, talk about fatty right. liver, talk about diabetes, cholesterol, right. hormonal imbalances yeah. and all of that. Now, you know, based in US uh, and knowing a lot about India, what do you feel are the differences in treatment of lifestyle diseases? I, and here, I personally am very unhappy with the way most people get treatment when it comes to lifestyle disease because, you know, I have personally seen lots and lots of doctors chamber in Chennai, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi, everywhere when I was doing my research work and it's just writing prescriptions. So you exactly. enter the doctor's chamber and they just, five minutes, they don't educate, they write prescriptions, change prescriptions, change medications and you are out of that. What is the situation there in US and, and are doctors now educating people on lifestyle changes and or how is it? That's a very good point. Uh, and because you were talking about Chennai, and I think maybe uh, when you were mentioning the doctor you spoke with, maybe it's Dr. Mohan. Mm -hmm. And I want to quote his study here. And that, that really pinpoints the, the main reason why we are seeing the difference. So he did the study, I think it was CARS study, and you can do the Google search for those. So he compared the people living in the US, mm -hmm. people of Indian origin living in the US versus people in India, like, and those were people in Chennai. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What they found is, they, it was a diabetes study. They found that the transition from pre-diabetes to diabetes mm -hmm. in India is mm -hmm. faster as compared to people living in the US. Why is that? Is it because there is a big reason because in India, when you, by the time you go to the doctor, it is already too late because there is no system where we are visiting the doctor on a preventive basis that we right. want to do preventive medicine. It is only when the problem gets too big, then that's where we want to address. While in the US, our insurance uh, offers free annual physical. That means we go to the doctor without any problem and that's covered by insurance. So it's zero cost to you. So you go to the doctor, you get all the blood work done and you can, the doctor can see that, okay, this is coming, your cholesterol is high or your A1C is uh, at the borderline. Mm -hmm. So that time you can intervene. Excellent. And because that, then that's a very big reason why and the pre-diabetes to diabetes because people caught it pr pretty early, right on time and they extended the time because of a great support from the from the doctor. But when it comes to lifestyle changes, food, educating that, is there right. any difference? Yes. Yeah. Exactly, because that's what the preventive medicine is. That why the, the doctors catch it pre-diabetes to diabetes, because that time they intervene and they talk to the patient about the importance of food and exercise and of course nutrition. When you talk about these lifestyle behavioral changes to your patients, and in a, in a way, not just like what you mentioned, that you go to a doctor in India, they will write a prescription. They will, the doctor will not even talk to you. You are t t telling the whole story and the doctor is just nodding. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm, and then writing on the prescription and five minutes, you are out. And the doctor will not even tell you sometimes what is the problem. They say, oh, don't worry. Just take these medication, medications and you will be fine. So that attitude and that lack of time with the doctors because they have already 50 or 60 patients waiting uh, in the waiting room. Yeah. So they also don't have time for their patients. But when they sit and talk with their patients about what behavioral changes they can make in their life, what is something going wrong in their life, when you talk about this, then you, see, you start seeing the changes. And that's why there are so many support groups in USA where they educate people about uh, diabetes prevention through all these exercise and nutrition, stress management, mm -hmm. and all these factors, then they contribute and you start seeing the changes. So that's a big difference there in USA and India.
So I think in US, you also an emphasis is on preventive uh, compared to Absolutely. what. Uh, yeah, I agree Absolutely. with you because in India, I don't see much of preventive conversations. It's more of curative. Of of course, correct. And we have our Bernard Medical Center. That's an example of how you can bring nutrition into practice without uh, talking about prescriptions. So our prescriptions for doctors and registered dietitians at Bernard Medical Center, we focus on talking to the patients and bringing the dietary changes. You, you ask them, our doctors and registered dietitians, can you write the prescription? They say, no, not now. If it is needed, definitely yes. But for those things where they know that intervention through nutrition can work, there is no prescription. I think that's excellent. How many doctors are there with PCRM community and Dr. Bernard's medical center? Yeah, we have now uh, 15,000 physician members associated with the physician's committee. And for Bernard Medical Center, where we are act actively seeing patients, we have a team of at least uh, three doctors. Mm -hmm. Three register, four registered dietitians mm -hmm. and physician assistants, mm -hmm. uh, one nurse practitioner. So we have a very good team, and some some are even doing telepathic medicine. And two of our doctors are of Indian origin also. And with them, all of these doctors prefer writing nutrition as a prescription. Right. Exactly. Excellent. And I think right. this is indeed our best medicine when it comes to reversing lifestyle diseases. Absolutely. Right. Now, talking about food, uh, you know, why uh, do you, uh, you know, talk so much about people avoiding animal foods and uh, dairy, milk products is one of the animal foods which we know is not good for lifestyle disease or diabetes for that matter. But for, for our viewers, could you throw some light on why to avoid animal foods and in particularly dairy? Because in India, milk is an emotional subject. You know, it's, it's a part of a household name. So right. could you please throw some light on that? Definitely, definitely. So when we are talking about animal products, if you see like, for example, milk, mm -hmm. milk is 50% calories from fats. Mm -hmm. Cheese, depending on the variety, could be up to 60 to 70% calories. They come from fats. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken breast, which is skinless chicken breast. You mm -hmm. see that there is no uh, fat which is visible that is 23% calories from fat. Mm. So the reason why we are saying animal products because they are so high in fats. And now we are learning and not, we are learning now, we have learned it from last 15, 20 years, there's so much research has been done. We are finding that a high, a diet high in animal fats is the main cause of diabetes and insulin resistance. Right. So because of the buildup of fat inside the muscle and liver cells, the, the, all the fats coming from uh, animal-based products, mm -hmm. we, our cells, although we are, our pancreas is making insulin, but our cells are unable to respond to that insulin right. Right. because of the fat buildup. That's why we are focusing on animal fats. But we are not animal, just saying animal fats. We are also talking about fats in general. It could be oil because mm -hmm. any uh, fat one gram of fat has nine calories. Yeah. So when you eat a diet which is high in fats, there you see the problem uh, build up. You consume way too many calories and you are unable to burn them. Right. The root cause of these problems is animal fats, animal products in the diet because they are high in fats. If you just take a, just imagine that you take vegetables, they don't have any fats. I mean, they have like minimal amounts. That's right. But the only fat which, is, which goes in your diet is through the oil you add from outside. That's but if right. you take an animal product, it is already full of fats, and then you add oil and cook it. Yes. Yeah. Only very true. In fact, that's very well said. And so a strong recommendation for all the viewers is avoid animal fats. And I think that is a strong Absolutely. takeaway. A strong takeaway and including dairy. And, uh, you know, I think, I think awareness is growing. People are getting to understand that milk is not a healthy food. In fact, it triggers a lot of disease. And, of course. Uh, uh, including hormonal imbalances and things like that. Now, and inflammation. Absolutely, it's milk fact, is abs high, so high, and uh, it's inflammatory. You know, and then so yeah. These two terms that you're mentioning: insulin resistance and chronic yeah. inflammation. You know, I think when chronic inflammation and insulin resistance work together, which is happening for ninety percent of the population, uh, right. and therefore that inflamed state of body is leading to lifestyle diseases. 
but nobody nobody talks about insulin resistance or inflammation you know there's no talking about the root cause of the disease unfortunately and i think then you know Absolutely. the role of people like us is important to spread that right awareness so that people are empowered with right knowledge so that they can reverse the disease now moving one step ahead from fat and animal foods india has a culture of processed foods you know that that right. nashta made at home and things like that which is again a lot of deep fried a lot of oils, oils. And, and things like that what is your opinion on that so again i will i will talk to the uh, on the same point that once you have these let's say you take egg egg is such a common thing and yeah. again the the egg industry i just imagine now the because of these the way we are producing these factory farming uh, chickens and hens and they are laying eggs and the way that they, they change their cycle is that they are just laying eggs they are all always eating and those eggs are all factory farm it's like it's not food it's like food like substance i would say it mm. and those eggs it is already high in cholesterol because one egg has a medium size egg would have 180 mg of cholesterol so one egg you already have full of fats and cholesterol you fry it in oil and then how do you eat it you eat it with a paratha which is again fried uh, baked in with a, so yeah. much oil or ghee That's so right. it becomes like a a, a, a food where which is so high in fats and once you have these fats you are before yeah. you even burn it you are ready with for your lunch that's right and by the time you have eaten your lunch and before you are ready to your system would not even clear it you are ready for an evening snack with again with high oil food samosas and churas and kharis and what not yeah. and then <laughs> that finishes then we are ready for the evening food and then we sleep so yeah. it's a cycle which repeats where we have so much eating high fat diet with animal products and our mm-hmm. system you know this is post prandial lipemia that yeah. there is so much of triglycerides and fats in your blood stream and it right. takes at least 5 to 6 hours for our liver to clear it from our system but before we have even clear it we are ready for another meal absolutely that's very well said i think i think we need to you know stop eating too much of the fat which is actually creating a problem of insulin resistance and chronic inflammation right what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting would you recommend that to people in general with diabetes with lifestyle disease i think it's it's such a a great thing you know i'm i'm a, i follow islam and i'm muslim i do fasting in during ramadan mm-hmm. and i see that this is so the way i see it because you are when you are fasting you are actually detoxifying and uh, yesterday we invited dr aditi govitrikar in our uh, free diabetes program show and right. she mentioned about intermittent fasting because she she does that a lot and she what the way she was saying is that you know the term autophagy yeah so she mentioned this and i was so impressed by that because she's a doctor of course so these are lysosomes and yeah. they will uh, clear it's like a detox a de- detox of your diet so intermittent fasting yeah. does the same you drink you drink a lot of water and then you let the system it's like a cleansing thing right. so i will highly recommend that if you combine intermittent fasting good followed right. by right eating good food yeah. good food right. and uh, exercise i think you have a complete recipe of living a healthy disease free life that's a very good take home message intermittent fasting combined with lot of plant foods eat right, right and exercise yeah and that's your you have the recipe <laughs> No, I think I think that was very well said, uh, Zishan. Uh, you know, I uh, another important question which a lot of people keep asking is, you know, eating out because mm. in India you get a lot of invitations, and so how do you balance? Of course, yes. How do you balance eating out, maintain a plant based diet, and things like that? What are your thoughts on that? So again, uh, when you are eating out, and that's always the number one reason that people they go that okay, we are in a party, and here we can eat it, but then. we will not be eating it the week later right mm-hmm. that's our approach but then you are going to a party and india is a country where the social life is so strong right. for every single event there is food so even there is a birthday party or there is a baptism or like a oath ceremony in for people of muslim origin or people of hindu faith they are 
everybody is doing something related with their uh, religion and then food is such a big part and okay. whether it's parties marriage uh, births so now how to address that it's a very good question now what i would say is that be prepared mm-hmm. when you are going in a party you know what kind of food you will be getting there either you take you eat something at home because you know you should not think that okay this is a party this is a food i like i know taste is something which is really important and you love and frying the food and salt the combination of that definitely enhances the taste right. but you have to think that whether this is this good for you is this is it something you are doing it once in six months that should be fine but it's like every other week mm-hmm. and sometimes even twice or thrice a week and sometimes both saturdays and sundays and friday nights you have eaten a food which is so high in fat and the whole week it will be not enough for you to come out of that effect and all these foods so what when you are traveling or when you are going in a party i would strongly recommend either you eat something beforehand or when you go there find the foods which are less in oil less in animal fats go heavy on salads because salads have so much fiber in them and fiber makes you full at that point maybe. if you eat fiber so maybe have a salad and go to a party and then you know right just, just eat food. yeah eat something healthy at at home or at a party you can eat salad because uh, it will be full of water retention and when there is a water retention you will feel you will have the f- fullness in your stomach right i know you have to compromise not everybody is keen on salads but yeah. a good dressing of salad and a piece of lemon in it squeeze a lemon and you can make it tasty just Absolutely. just imagine indian carrots and the beetroot is it's yeah. so tasty right 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 i think it's all about being aware being conscious and little right. discipline little discipline which is required right we are so conscious about the way we dress up right when we are going to a party we want to dress up really good we want to look sharp and elegant but we have to make sure what we are putting it in a, on our plate in our body because that's where you will get into lifestyle diseases like diabetes and obesity and heart disease you don't want that it's not good for you it's not good for your family so that's the number one thing i would say focus on what you are eating live a healthy lifestyle because once you change something in your diet and you start seeing the changes you don't want to go back you want to live a healthy life where you can be smiling and you can be spending time with your family having fun with kids running around not just sitting at one place and feeling exhausted and tired very very true in fact uh, you know you were talking about the diabetes program why don't you share with all the viewers oh yes uh, that's a current yeah, i think that's you know, a, in fact i is so nice uh, for dr zishan to run a diabetes education program for india specifically and we are seeing good amount of participations and i really want you to throw some light on that program that you are doing for diabetes in india and if you can just share something for that great reminder karan i think this i have a slide here and let me tell you about this and let me know if you see the slide well yes yes so uh, we have done and i think karan thank you for being part of this exciting series this is our series 2 of fight diabetes with food india program and this is a free program and you here you can see the banner dr aditi govitrikar she is a, uh, she has been mrs world she is a supermodel and she has uh, been she has a she is a bollywood film actor so she and malika sharawat malika sharawat has such been such a great friend and ally who is, who is helping us promote this uh, plant based nutrition in india and in this series what we are doing karan is that the idea is to really talk to people who are struggling with diabetes give them all the resources and tools through this program bring experts like you and dr pramod tripathi and so many other doctors who would be coming each week and so many other panelists so we want to have a discussion on what are the challenges we face when we are having diabetes what kind of foods we can eat what are those recipes to make those foods so we will discuss everything uh, uh in this program so i would strongly recommend people to please visit this website fight diabetes with food india.org and register and when you register you will get a confirmation email with zoom link so please make sure to whitelist us because we don't want your the email to end up in spam right mm-hmm. 
because that is very important for you. And then we will be sending you um, uh, the reminders. And thank you, Karan, for making this uh, WhatsApp group for people in India so that where we can share the, the reminder information about Zoom link and reminder events so that people can join easily. So please, I uh, highly recommend, please uh, visit this website. And then once you join, you will also get access to the resource portal where we are sharing recipes and uh, videos and all the class recordings. Everything is going on the portal. So you can, if you cannot attend live, you can again uh, see everything by going to the portal and accessing the recording sessions. And it's absolutely free. You know, it's totally absolutely free. free for all of you. Yeah. And but thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zishan, for sharing this for all the viewers. Of course. So that uh, they can become aware and start reversing their disease. You know, you have been a great friend and a guide. And thank you so much for all the information that you keep sharing. You know, with of all course. of us. It's a, it's a pleasure, Karan, and uh, please uh, keep up the good work, what you are doing. Uh, the, what doctors are not doing in India, you are doing it because you are actually giving time to your patients, talking with them, giving them ideas, recipes of success. And I think that's where, that's, that's the most important thing. They don't need prescriptions. They need somebody to talk through them, what, how they can bring this dietary change and start seeing the results. I, do, I, th I think uh, in my experience, this is very true. They need right information. Right. Right information, little support, and a lot of patients start becoming better, start reversing their disease. And that is what, when we see them becoming better, that keeps us going. You know, that is what the passion is. So thank you once again, Dr. Zishan, for being here and it's sharing with all of us uh, something it's a that pleasure, can Karan. really help all of us. Thank you so much. Indeed a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Take care. And before uh, we go from here, one message, which I really want you to give it to all the viewers, whoever has lifestyle disease, indigestion, fatty liver, diabetes, one message that you really would want to give to all of them. Okay, one message I think is very, very clear and you might have got it what, where I'm going is, go plant-based, eat, a lot of fiber because once you go plant-based, you are eating a lot of fiber in your diet. Do exercise. 150 minutes of exercise a week would be great for you. It's a great combination of uh, food and exercise. Manage your stress level, like something what Dr. Dean Ornish has done and reversed heart disease of so many people. And right. sleep well. Take good rest. Enjoy time with your family and uh, be happy in your life. You know, I think these four are extremely important pillars of good health. Nutrition, physically being active, good sleep, and emotional health. Right. And I think that's an excellent note to finish this. And to all the viewers, just take care of these four excellent pillars of yeah. good health. And when you do that, reversing disease or creating good health just becomes a byproduct of your habits. Yeah. And Karan, I think we should definitely mention because... Uh, when people, I think it will just take one more minute, but it is very important for people because there is so much uh, misinformation and there are so many myths around uh, your proteins or calcium. Very right? true. People think when that they have to eat meat and dairy for protein needs. And it's true because those who have kids at home, they want to give their kids milk. Why? Because they think milk is a good source of protein. It's good for the body. But let me tell you, if you focus on fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes, you make it a power plate and you eat all these things in your diet regularly, you don't have to worry about anything. Legumes will provide all the proteins you need for your growing body. Beans and grains will provide calcium. Don't think that dairy is the only source of calcium. Think about beans and greens. When it comes to fruits, vitamins and antioxidants, cancer-fighting compounds, yeah. And when it comes to vegetables and grains, carbohydrates. So that's all you need. Carbohydrates, protein, calcium, vitamins, antioxidants, you are all covered. You don't need to worry about anything else. No, I think that's a very well point because misinformation is another epidemic which people are living apart from epidemic of lifestyle diseases. So, and therefore, you know, a constant endeavor to spread right information is extremely important. Absolutely. Thank you once again, Dr. Zishan, for being here. 
and lovely interacting with you like always. Same here, same here. Take care. Bye.